Maybe um, I had already emphasized the fact that I consider myself a pop fan when I uh, positively reviewed Justin Bieber's Justice, but um, I feel like I have to emphasize it again. So I'm reviewing Taylor Swift's Red. That's not the reason I'm reviewing Taylor Swift's Red. Um, I've not really been a Taylor Swift fan for that long. And that's not because I ever disliked her. It's just because for the longest time I was so resistant to all pop music to the point where I was like, I didn't, I didn't want to hear fucking Taylor Swift. But after I've gotten more accumulated to pop, I've started to like it more. I was just like, you know what? I really want to hear all of her work before Red. Now Red's been out for a couple weeks now. So I am a little late. However, um, I did really want to know what she was offering to the table as an artist. So I went back through and I listened to a ton of her albums. I didn't get through everything. Mainly because of earlier stuff I'm going to listen to later because right now I'm focusing on new albums for the top 100. And um, which, by the way, before anything goes, thank you for 500. We hit 500 last night. Thank you so much. Um, I'm, I'm excited about that. I'll, I'll, I'll make my top 100 soon. Um, and I might make a video talking about 500. I don't know. We'll see. However, um, when I'm talking about this, um, I didn't go, I haven't gone through her first couple albums mainly just because of not really knowing if. I would like the sound all that much. So I started where her pop era started, like Red. So I listened to Red 1989 and everything beyond that. Um, and I really like it. I actually really liked her as an artist after listening to those. Specifically, I really like Folklore and Evermore. Those are the two that I just loved so much. Um, so I was really excited for Red because I really like Red. That was the other one I really liked. I thought it was just really consistent, enjoyable, energetic. It was just a great pop record to me. Um, so now that I've, find, I've... I listened to Red Taylor's version a couple days ago. I just haven't got to writing it now, but I've written it. Um, and this is a weird review for me because I'm not really going to review everything on the 30 song album. And that's because the first, most of it is deluxe, is the original album, just with kind of additions to it. In fact, 21 out of the 30 tracks are either deluxe or the original. Um, and I will go through that a little bit to get my takes on some of the songs, some of the changes I like. Um, overall, I don't think a single song is not improved here. They're all just more vibrant, more well put together. The singing, I think, is more improved now. There's something about her vocals that is, like, more, feels more real to me. It feels more raw. It feels more personality feel because I feel like if I were to compare the version, the red, this version, and the original, the original is great, but it feels a little more poppy to me. This one feels like it has a little bit more of a richness to it and a vibrance to it and more creativity to it sonically. Really, no song is improved. I thought I Knew You Were Trouble was way better on this version, and uh, we're going to be getting back together. Um, what, a couple of songs I really liked here. I really liked Everything Has Changed more in this version. That one was just so much more enjoyable this time. had so much more vibrance to it. In general, I just liked it more. Um, really, at the end of the day, um, I'll go through um, Begin Again is another one that I thought was a little better. And Stay, Stay, Stay. Mostly every song is better, but there's a lot that just felt way better this time. And overall, um, yeah, I'm probably not going to listen to the original versions anymore. I mean, why would I? They're just better here. Um, but uh, we'll kind of get to the, some of the deluxe stuff, which is I actually have not heard the original version of most of the deluxe. Basically, from the moment I knew up until Ronan, these uh, five songs, I have not heard the original version. So, I mean, State of Grace is the intro, and it's just the acoustic version of the intro. I love this acoustic version. I think it sounds beautiful and amazing. Um, overall, I really like everything on the... Um, on the on this deluxe stuff we'll add by the way don't if you if you want to ever feel like your artist is doing well do not look at the fucking streaming numbers of this album jesus fucking christ like oh my god this thing is like yeah no this thing is huge like all too well has only been out for a couple weeks and has 74 million streams jesus fucking christ taylor fans are crazy um Really, at the end of the day, though, everything that's redone, I really like. I think it's all really well put together. It's just more vibrant. It's more consistent. I really like it as a whole. Um, then we have um, ever, then we have um, pretty much Better Man through uh, Very First Night are all these original tracks. They're all new songs that we have not heard, which, yeah, normally I don't show my hair. That's what my hair looks like um, there. I normally don't show it, but it's not hard to find my hair. I, it's not like I hide it. I just usually don't show it in reviews. Um, so when I look at this entire... Um, the new songs, most of them are pretty good to me, but I kind of got why they're removed. Not that they're bad, but I feel like in any other context of this not being a kind of newer version of an album, like almost a deluxe in its own way, I wouldn't actually like, I wouldn't actually care about most of these songs. But there's a couple I really do like. I think Better Man's actually really should have been on the original. I really like that song. Uh, Nothing New with Sophie Brit or with, uh, it's not Sophie Bridgers, what the fuck? Fiona Bridgers was great. Fiona, Phoebe Bridgers, fuck me, I'm sorry. Um, Phoebe Bridgers is a great addition to this. They are a great duo. I really hope there's more of that coming out. 
Um, they just have a really nice vibrance to it. It's a really nice, soft song. Me, which I don't, I don't know if you could tell this, but I personally like soft Taylor more than energetic pop Taylor. I like energetic pop Taylor. It's just that soft Taylor with just the acoustic and just vocalization. That that is her peak. That is where I love her. Um, Babe is a really nice song too. Um, I find it to just be a pretty enjoyable song. Not a ton to it. Um, now I'm switching to my script because now I actually have to kind of review these songs. Uh, message in a bottle is another nice one to me. Um, I like the upbeat message to it overall. Um, I bet you think about me is I really like this one too. I really like the duos on this album. I really like Chris Stapleton here specifically. Um, I think he has really nice singing to it. And I think they really go back each other. Well, with it overall, I like it overall. Just, I think it's a nice song, which I do want Taylor fans to answer this question to me. Are these new songs or are the, because I, from, from the vault, it's getting my impression that these were removed from any red version earlier. So does that mean that um, these missed the original red cut or are these new songs entirely? Because they all sound like they could be on red. Like none of them are like, none of them sound like they could fit on Evermore or Folklore. I feel like they, they sound like they would fit on the original red. Um, Forever Winter is a great song to me. I, this is one of my favorites on here. Just has this really nice energy to a really catchy chorus, which I've said it before. I mean, I don't have to say it before. Everybody said it. Taylor's songwriting is immaculate. It's amazing. She's always able to just really convey these things very well and create very catchy, enjoyable ideas and hooks. Um, Run, I really like this song, which you'd be shocked because I have not talked that nice about Ed Sheeran. But I will be honest, I really like Ed Sheeran and Taylor. Um, everything has changed. I thought they were great on, and I think they're great on here too. Um, I'm not even an Ed fan. Like y'all watched my Equals review. I trashed that album, but I think him and Taylor are just a really nice duo. And I think they actually work off each other super well. Um, very first night is another nice song, but then we have All Too Well, which is this 10 minute song that everybody was excited about. To be honest, I fucking love this song. Um, I love All Too Well. That is my favorite song off of Red, the original. Before this, um, I, before the new version was ever a thing, I liked All Too Well. So I'm original. No, I'm kidding. I, I do think All Too Well is the best song off of the original Red. And on this version, I think it's the best of anything in Red era. Because um, for me, I feel like when you make a 10-minute song, you have to make it consistently enjoyable. Because 10 minutes of music can get boring. And Taylor somehow does that. She just does the songwriting on the song, the singing that everything about it is just so well put together to the point where i would easily call this one of the best songs in her catalog not just the 10 minute version just all too well as a whole whether that be the taylor version whether that be the 10 minute version or the original version it's just a great song and on here she just adds so much to it adds even more personality to it and it weirdly never gets boring it's weirdly enjoyable and like lovable for that entire 10 minute runtime in the end of the day it's not that all too well is like a like a masterpiece of a song never heard before amazing but it's just a really lovable song it's just really well done on this version of the album um and honestly yeah i think making it a 10 minute version is a great idea it feels really personal and real to her and i'm i'm shocked it's this successful like this is the biggest song in the world right now and it's 10 fucking minutes that is crazy the amount of money she's made off of this song i can't even describe but yeah no i love this song um when it comes down to it though i really love red i actually think this is a great version um to me, it doesn't feel like it repeats anything. It feels like it improves off of what it can. It adds more rich, vibrant energy that the original kind of lacks to me. Um, the new songs are also amazing too. Uh, and also getting a 10 minute version of All Too Well was amazing. Just in general, I love the concept of this record and I love the way it comes at its goal to bring back Red in a more improved, likable way. Um, and even though you could say something that's like, oh, she already released this, she goes from the original. This is better than the original every way. Like, I will probably not be listening to the original much now because I have this. Um, I love Red Taylor's version. I think she killed it. It was a super lovable, enjoyable project, to be honest. Yeah, just Taylor Swift, uh, amazing work here. Love this one. Which you might be weird. You might think, oh, I can't give this a rating. But I feel like I could confidently give uh, Red but Taylor's version a uh, pretty solid A- minus here. You might be confused by that, but... I don't know, when I finished it, I was like, nah, I feel like I'd give that a rating. I don't even know why. I just feel like I can give it a rating. And it's a pretty high up on my uh, favorite albums of the year. It's definitely top 20. Um, it's definitely one of my favorite pop records of the year, which I think after this video, I'll be posting like a list of my favorite pop albums of the year because I don't know, I've listened to a lot and I will like to do that. Pop has been really solid this year though. I mean, Montero, uh, An Evening with Silk Sonic, which is kind of pop. I would say it's somewhat pop. And I would also call it R&B mainly, but it, I would say it also could fall into pop. Um, 30 by Adele was fucking amazing. Um, 
in terms of what's coming up in pop, I don't know. The rest of this year so far in music, though, what's been announced is insanely boring. Like, there's really nothing that I'm that excited. I mean, there's uh, Hall of Fame 2.0 next weekend, which, God, who gives a fuck? Um, I'll review it, but I do not care. I like Batman. That was a good single. And then we had, uh, uh, what was the other one he did? Uh, oh, there's also a new Juice World album on the 10th, which I'll review because Juice World. Um, after that, though, there's not a ton that's been announced. I know new stuff will come out. I know there's something else big coming out, but we'll see. Last December looked boring, and then people kept doing surprise drops. We had Man on the Moon 3 one week, uh, Music Can Be Murdered by Side B the next week, and then we ended the year off with Whole Lotta Red, which would end up being, like, my most played album of 2021. So, yeah. Yeah, by the way, there are uh, Eminem, Taylor Swift, uh, Kanye West, uh, Playboy Cardi fans existing. I am one of them. Um, what do you guys think on Red Taylor's version? Let me know in the comment section below. Uh, don't forget to subscribe. See you guys next time. I also, I'll do, I'll be doing Grammy nomination video. I tried to record that a couple days ago and I accidentally deleted it. And then I will be doing a video on They Got Amnesia by French Montana. I'm, I need to listen to it first. I have not gotten the confidence to. I don't know if it's just going to suck or just be kind of eh. But whatever case, I'll make a video on it. it, may, it may, either I'll ever just make a negative review on it or I'll have to look at it and it'll be so bad at the point where I have to make a full length review. So we'll, we'll see how I come across uh, They Got Amnesia. See you guys next time. Peace out. Bye.